Uh, good morning, students. Uh, well, actually, I shouldn't say good morning because it's morning here now, but you might watch this video late at night, so I'm going to say good day to all of you. Um, just uh, on Mr. Isaacs, uh, it's, a, it's a very unfortunate thing that he couldn't be there on Monday evening. Uh, his mom subsequently passed away yesterday morning, so it was impossible for him to be there. He wanted to be there, and I actually had to chase him off campus because he, he wanted to, to be there. So be that as it may, uh, you are supposed to do topic 13 with you, uh, pricing concepts and uh, setting the right price. Now some of you might want to ask pricing, pricing, marketing, uh, pricing and marketing, shouldn't pricing be somewhere with the finance people? Because you all know uh, a company, a corporate, big, large corporate company would have finance division, HR division, marketing division, uh, and even a legal division, to just name some of them. Now, shouldn't pricing and pricing concepts be with a finance division? If you, if you want to ask that, it's probably a very relevant question. But it is that and more. Because listen to or think about the marketing function. Think about the marketing function. Marketing, in essence, in essence, must draw potential clients to the company and to its products. And when I say products, when I say products, I actually mean services as well. That's the function, very, maybe oversimplified of marketing. It must draw potential clients to the company. Now, pricing can do that as well, or pricing can chase people away. Think about this. Uh, some Korean company takes over Mercedes-Benz. And they sell new Mercedes-Benz, but they slash the prices by 50%. What is the people's reaction be to that? They would say, no, no, the quality has dropped. So although you can think it's a very cheap price, but it can actually chase people away because you need to, that perception of quality you need to maintain if that is part of your company. Okay. And now, chapter 13 is, you'll see, Concepts, pricing cons and setting the right price. What is the right price? If I start a business, what is the right price? How can I, what, what do I have to look at to, to get to the right price? Now that is when it becomes a, a marketing exercise. Now the chapter outline is very simple. The importance of, of price to marketing managers, pricing objectives, the demand determinant, the cost determinant, other determinants of price, the relationship between price and quality, and how to set a price on a product. Now, why is it important to marketing managers? Why is it, you, you, you know these concepts, price there, what is a price? What is given up in exchange to acquire goods or service and revenue? You know what is revenue, you've done this before. The price charged to customers multiplied by the numbers of units sold and the profit what is left after all activities have been paid. That's in a nutshell, and, th and that is why, that is why uh, it becomes a marketing issue. Pricing becomes a marketing issue, not just a financial one. Um, now, prices, that value there, keyword there is value. Prices must represent value to buyers to facilitate exchange. Some form of exchange must take place, but that exchange must have some form of value attached to it. Prices must not be too low. Remember, I spoke to you about Mercedes-Benz and Korean companies selling it at half the price. It cannot be too low or too high because it will influence the perception. It will influence the perception. If a Korean company drops the cars by 50%, it will influence that perception over there and say they have, maybe they have compromised on the quality known uh, for Mercedes-Benz cars. And that competitive edge, pricing must always give you a competitive edge. Now a competitive edge, if I have to define competitive edge, it is what makes your company stand out from the others. What can you be do better than the others? That is typically known what we refer to as a competitive edge. Now our price, pricing objectives, pricing objectives, setting the right price, pricing objectives, what is an objective? What do we want to gain with this? Where do we want to be eventually with our pricing? You can have a profit orientated pricing objective, you can have a sales orientated pricing objectives, and you can have a status quo pricing objectives. Now your profit one is 
where you want to maximize profit. You strictly go, a company can decide, listen, we need as much profit as we possibly can. We need as much profit as we possibly can. And then the other company can say, we just need satisfactory profits. In other words, we, we, we know a 10%, a 10% markup, that will be satisfactory. We're not really, but we need profits. And then a target return of investment. Now that one there, a target return on investment. Companies might say, uh, our target return on investment is 10%. If they say that, they have to work out their profit margins very carefully. And there's a formula of doing that. You say it is the net profit after taxes divided by your total assets. There's a very nice, uh, students, there's a very nice example in your textbook, somewhere page 460 something, somewhere there. Just find that very nice example of how you can, there's a 1 of 12% and a 1 of 10%. Just, just, just see how it works, that formula over there. So if they say the return on investment must be 10%, they must work it out according to that. In other words, a net, a net profit is obviously profit after taxes. All the profit after taxes, and then divide that by the total assets. If that is 10%, and, the, and that was a company's target, then it, they did well. It could be 12%, and the company did actually better than the return on investment. So then, the, the second category there is sales-orientated pricing objectives. Now, a market share firm's product sales as a percentage of industry sales. Now, industry, this is a concept, students, I really want you to have a good understanding of. Okay, industry. If I tell you I'm a lecturer at UWC, how would you say in what industry am I? Tertiary education industry. Tertiary education system. Tertiary education system. If I tell you I'm a medical doctor, what industry would I be in? Medical field. Pardon? Medical. Medical, healthcare. healthcare. If I tell you I'm a civil engineer, what industry would I be in? Or if I tell you, maybe another one, if I tell you I'm a, uh, I've studied pharmacy. You're also in healthcare. Yeah. Also in healthcare. Also in healthcare. Now, that concept industry is very important because you're going to pick up in quite a number of your modules. You need to know what is the industry. A teacher could be, this industry could be education. A lecturer could be tertiary education or higher education. A medical doctor, the health, health uh, uh, industry. And so we can go on. But it's important that we have a full understanding of what we mean by industry. So when we say a market share, firms product sales as a percentage of market share. Let, let me take you to an example. Volvo, Volvo cars, they came into South Africa, they've been here a number of years and they withdrew and they came back. Now, when they had their board meeting, wherever they did in Sweden, wherever they are because they bought Ford as well, so we don't know where their head office really. But they, 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 when they've re-entered the South African market, they were obviously in that luxury brand of cars, they were Mercedes-Benz, they were Audi and BMW, and now they want to come in. They want to be part of that. And they could have said in their board meetings, if we can just get a 4% share of that market there, then we'll be fine. So they chase a 4% of the industry. They don't chase sales, uh, as in units, they chase a percentage of the industry. So Volvo could have said, let us re-enter the South African market, but we need 4 or 5% of the industry. So we need to take to grab 4 or 5% from the existing ones. Then that is a sales orientated where it becomes part of the market share. Sales maximization, they ignore profits. They ignore profits. The competition, and the, now if you see that in red, students, that part in red, that you, 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 you've received the slides, you've received these slides, but that would not be part of that. I've added that, and I will gladly provide these slides to you as well, but that would not form part of your slides that you've received via Canva, all right? So I will, I will just upload this again. Sales maximization, they ignore profits, they, it is, they just want, if the sales are rising, now somebody might say, but that cannot be a, a very good 
or a profitable objective if you say let's not care about profits let's just go for sales yes you can do that for a for a, for a short space of time because you want market penetration you want market you don't care about uh, maximizing you want market penetration i've got a new a new uh, uh, product on the market i just want that product to be out in the market as quickly as possible i don't care about the profits and later on obviously after your product is on the market established itself on the market you say now we go for profit so one can do this for a limited time only but that could be a pricing objectives a status quo pricing unfortunately is not that clear now but what it says there it is just meeting the it is just everything remains the same everything remains the same there's very little planning in that because you don't really think about things to happen okay so that's our pricing objectives I think we need to move faster uh, the demand determinant of price I want you to understand this graph uh, because if you don't ah. Uh, we don't see that axel there but be that as it may uh, there's no way we can i'm just going to try something because uh, i just hope i don't mess up everything now but okay let me explain it to you that over there You'll see it on your slides. It's quantity demand per week. That is what's written there. You can see there the Q. No, that's a zero. Yeah, quantity demand per week. Now, whenever you see something like that, price rent, it goes up. In other words, there could be five, there could be 10, there could be 20, etc. On this side, there could be 100. It is quantity. There. Quantity there, 100, 200, 400, etc. But it's not written there, it is for you to interpret. Now that demand curve there, demand curve, think about it, think about it, demand curve. A demand curve, in other words, what is the demand of a product? Demand curve. Demand is the quantity of a product that will be sold in the market at various prices for a specific period. Now look, look again. It is price, it goes up from zero there, it could be 1,000 there, it could be any number that you want to add there. There the quantity, it, the quantity means the, the, the number of units is on this side. And now look at the curve, look at the curve, look at, think, think of the curve. If it is there, if it is there, it means the price is relatively high, it's very high. It is at its highest there, the price. But the units, there, the units there, it's at its lowest. So, very few units over here, very high price over there, that's the demand curve. Now, the units increase, the units increase here, that is now could be, here we could talk about 10 units, there we could already talk about 100 and maybe 20 units, there 40 units, 60 units, 80 units. As the units increase there, as the units increase, the price there comes down as well. Does it make sense? The price, it's a demand curve. On this side, it's very high, and on this side, it's very low, because it's, it's, it, the demand was more. Now, that's your typical demand curve. Um, I am not getting where I want to be. Okay. Let's quickly go back there. The demand determinant of price. Demand determinant of price. If prices increase, the demand decreases. Like that over there. Price increase, now it makes sense. The more expensive something becomes, uh, people will then say, I can't afford this. Very few people will be able to afford this. The demand for that particular item decreases. And here, as a price decreases, the demand increases. It's just the opposite. Now that's the demand determinant of price. Now in the exams, ladies and gentlemen, we can ask you what is the demand determinant of a price. And you will have to be able to explain that very simple theory. If a price increases, the demand decreases. If a price decreases, the demand increases. And say a nice narrative about the demand determinant of price. That is... Yeah.
It's a possibility. Now the supply curve. Supply curve is exactly the opposite as a demand curve. And listen to the word supply, supply curve. The other one was demand. In other words, what consumers demand. What consumers demand. Now this is supply curve. In other words, what suppliers can supply. What suppliers can supply. Right. The quantity of a product that will be offered by a supplier at various prices for a specific period. That is not part from part of the slides you got, but you will get this. Suppliers can produce more at higher prices. Now that's the key word. Suppliers can, if, if the demand increase, the suppliers can produce more. Uh, or if, no, in, if the price charged is higher, the supplier can produce more. Because the supplier has more uh, surplus to produce more of a particular product. So the supply goes exactly the opposite. There it goes. This is quantity on this side. That is rand on that side. So the more, the more, the, the higher the price. The, you've said I must switch this thing off and I did not. The higher the price, there the more the supplier can produce. The higher the price, the more the supplier can produce. Okay. Uh, that's economic theory of supply as prices increase. Now you see the next slide. The next slide will reach the equilibrium. We'll reach that equilibrium. But for now, the economic theory, also careful for the exams in this one, economic theory of supply, as prices increase, supply increases because supplier can do more with higher prices. It's, it's that simple. It's that simple. Now the next slide, the next slide will show you where the two actually meet. That's the perfect position to, well, not the perfect, the equilibrium position to be in that one there. You see there, over there. Where they meet, that is actually the equilibrium. That is, it is when demand and the supply are equal. You'll find a very nice example. Please go have a look at that on page 466 of your, of your fifth edition of your textbook. The fifth edition of your textbook. Uh, <coughs> the demand determinant of price. Now, students, I've seen in the past you have made mistakes. You, and it was so sad for me as a person marking your script to see that you studied this, but you've confused it. You've confused it, and I could not give you marks. Well, maybe not you, maybe students in previous years. So please listen carefully, because students tend to confuse elasticity of demand. Elasticity of demand is consumer's responsiveness or sensitivity to changes in price. Okay. Elastic demand. I think I was thinking of something to show you. And uh, yeah, I got it here. I got it here. Elastic demand. When consumers buy more or less of a product, when the price changes. Now, inelastic demand is an increase or decrease in price will not significantly affect the demand for that product. Now, I've seen students change it around. Be careful. Okay, listen to me now. See this rubber band? I can stretch it like that. It's elastic. If it's elastic, it means it can stretch. It can move in different ways. Right? That means it's elastic. In terms of this, it means the prices will change. The prices will fluctuate. It's elastic. If it's inelastic, this fabric of mine here is inelastic. I can, it won't, it won't move. So this is, this thing is inelastic. It cannot, so if it's inelastic, the prices, an increase in or decrease will not affect the demand for the product. So if a product, now we talk about, now unitary elasticity is an increase in sales exactly offset, and so it comes actually the same. Uh, that one, I really want you to understand that, the elasticity, inelastic, and that is when there is really no, it offsets, uh, the total will remain the same. I'm going to give you examples of that just now. Now sometimes we say something is price sensitive. A product is price sensitive, or a product is not price sensitive. Let me explain this to you, because it has a direct bearing on elasticity of demand. Um, when 
people or whenever the government or whoever when they increase the prices of cigarettes people think of people think it's time to stop smoking they've done research in especially the Scandinavian countries where they've a significant decrease in people's smoking habits if the price increase so in other words the more expensive the cigarettes become more and more people decided to quit the bad habit okay so an increase in price offsets a decrease in demand it means that cigarettes are very sensitive to price changes especially price increases it also means that cigarettes will be elastic the demand will come down but now unfortunately it's not that simple in real life think of the price of fuel going up by five rand a liter next week Wednesday first Wednesday of every month your normal commuter your personal your up and day running to work and leisure they will immediately start to save fuel so that will the demand will come down in terms of personal use but think of a courier company they can't they can't they can't that is their lifeline they will just, so in terms of that the demand will stay the same so it can be and a product can be elastic it all depends on who you're referring to or it can be inelastic all depending on who you're referring to so this elasticity but please let me just come back to that one remember the rubber band it's elastic it means people buy more or less if the price change if it's inelastic it means the demand one now if we think about an example of um, this an increase or decrease in price will not significantly affect the demand of a product can we think of a product like that we think of a product that it doesn't matter if the price increase or the price decrease the demand will stay the same it's a very challenging one. I have to think really hard, actually, uh, 10 minutes or more to, to get to that product. So I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you a nice example. And you must tell me if you agree. Think of the price of higher education, university education. That demand will not change. Regardless, if the fees go up by 20% next year, there'll be people protesting <laughs> yes. but the demand won't change people won't say uh our education has become so expensive now i'm not i'm rather not going to sit at home no they will make a plan for a bursary or a student loan or whatever so the demand will never change if so the price one can say and i want you to, to, to tell me what i've just told you now if i say the price of higher education is not sensitive what do I mean by that the price of higher education is not sensitive to price increase and price decrease it's inelastic. It's, inelastic. it's inelastic it means it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if it goes up or down the demand will stay the same but almost there are so many products the other way around, but if, if the price go up, people will just buy less of that particular product. People will just eventually also reach a stage where you say, listen, yeah, I, I used to be able to afford that salmon. I can't anymore. Mm. I used to be able to afford nice seafood and prawns. And I can't anymore. And they did, it's not part of their menu anymore. If the price go up beyond people's means. Okay. Now, the next one. There's a nice example now. This slide, I've also added this slide. You won't, you won't, you, you, this slide will not, uh, I don't think this slide is part of your, because I've added it yesterday on me. Look at, let's look at the three examples here. Peter sells 100 apples per day at 3 rand per apple. His turnover for the day is 300 rand. His cost is 1 rand per apple. So he makes a clear profit. Now this is really oversimplifying, because we, took away the, the fuel, he's, 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 he must buy the apples and he must maybe bring the apples back in his bucket. Take that out of the equation just for the sake of this argument, alright? So he makes a clear profit of 200 rand per day. 
if he sticks to now he he sells one and on average obviously one day it will be 95 the other day will be 105 etc etc but on average he sells 100 apples per day now peter decides to you see those specials that you see in, in shops all the time special discount 50 percent discount you see that now peter wants to do the same thing he drops his price to 2 and 50 per apple and because of that, immediately offsets an increase in demand. He, he sold 180 apples if he, if, 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 if he does that. When he dropped his price to 2 rand 50 and not 3 rand, his, his demand increased by a whopping 80% to 180. So his demand, quantity demand is up by 80%. And he's changing price and he changed the price from, from 3 Rand to 2 Rand 50. He dropped the price by a mere 20%. But it offsets an increase. Now that's exactly what happens on a day-to-day -day basis, ladies and gentlemen. If you go to Tiger Valley, go to Canal, go wherever, you will see special discount all the time. All over the one one year birthday sale, 19-year birthday sales, prices. This is what they hope to achieve. They hope to achieve that if they if they drop the price, they will sell more, which will actually offset a bigger profit. Now look at that profit there. His cost remains one rand per apple. That's, it's a simple. His cost remains one rand per apple. So his, his turnover increased to 450. Why is 180 his cost now and his cost there was only, was only 100? This is his cost. His cost. Because he sold 180 apples. Mm. And, he, and, he, and, he, and he, he paid to his supplier, come let's say the Cape Town fruit market, he pays one rand per apple. So that remained the same. Mm. His cost remained the same, it's one rand per apple. But, so, his turnover, 450 minus the one. So he made a clear profit of 270 rand per day that is if he does that a good a good marketing sales strategy so he he could manage to get his profit for that particular up by 70 percent by just dropping the price of apples there because it, it offsets an increase in demand so it is the price remember what we've said in previous slides if the price drops uh the demand increase okay that one now he decides to take it a little bit further he says, special galore. You see that special? Closing down special closing. Those specials that really catch your eyes. Over radio, TV, all over the show. Drops price. Peter decides to drop his price to 2 rand per apple. Mm. The sales increase to 200. Not, sorry, not 200 rand. That is a mistake. <laughs> that are, there is a mistake. The sales increase to 200. So, and I don't think it's part, there's another section there missing. Uh, yeah, okay, but I can explain this to you. His sales increased to 200 there. His cost remained 200 rand. His turnover was 400. So it means he made a profit again of 200 only. 200 only. That means this is actually the same as that one. Although he, he dropped his prices even further, it offsets another increase in demand, but the profit remained the same. In, in actual fact, he worked a lot harder here. Because remember now he had to sell 200 apples uh, for a 200 rand profit, and here he had to sell 100 apples for a 200 rand profit. So, this, so Peter decides that is out of the question. The fool, however, the fool, We'll go that evening to his wife and tell her, you know what? I made a killing today. I've sold 200 apples. And then his wife asked him, what was your profit? 200. Ah, the same as three days ago. So this was not a good, was not a good uh, uh, exercise. This was not a good business strategy. That one was. That one was. Okay. So now this quantity demand, 80% in the next slide will show that one. Uh, yeah, 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 there it is, there it is. You see elasticity, elasticity of demand, 
If elasticity is equal to the percentage change in quantity demand, let's go back. Let's go back, let's go back. The quantity demand is 80% there. That 80 we're going to carry over to the next slide now. It is there. We put that 80 on top there. That is 80 divided by the change in price. Remember, I've said 20%. So 80 divided by 20% will give you a figure better than one, larger than one. Okay? So it says there, if E is bigger than one, it's elastic demand. And if E is smaller than, that is now, elastic, uh, smaller than one, it is inelastic demand. If it's equal to one, it is unit demand. You remember that one, um, the third one, the third one will, will be there. The third one will be there. The third one will be there. This is also an exercise that you can do at home in your leisure. It is very simple. You just see the percentage change. Let me just quickly go there again because I want you to have a good understanding of this. That quantity demand over there, by 80%, it changed by 80% the demand. From 100 to 180, that's 80%. And then the change in price from, two, from 3 rand back to 2 rand 50, that's 20%. So it is 80% divided by 20, it gives you more than 1. I mean, you can, you can work that out. Okay. Um, and now, the demand determinant of price, the example of elastic demand. Yeah, that is clear. That is clear. Thank goodness. Once again, you see no numbers there. Now, we expect university students without numbers still to figure this one out. And remember what I've always said to you, no, maybe not you, my previous students. Look it from the outside in. Always try to interpret it from the outside in. You'll see there, look at the heading. Example of elastic demand. You'll see there, and then, okay, okay, this is the, the topic, that is the heading of this. Then you look from the outside in, you'll see there, price in land, okay. You'll see a zero there, what you don't see there is quantity. Quantity is written there and there. Unfortunately, you cannot see it. So, okay, now you have a picture. That is price in land, it goes up. So if, if that is zero, that could be 1,000. That could be 500. Just, just, okay. If that is zero there in terms of quantity, there it could be 20. Uh, uh, units, units, okay. Now, okay, now you figure that one out. That one is price, this one is quantity, and you've got an example of. So you say there, if the price is high, there is a price at its highest. At its highest, the quantity is at its lowest. If you must do that there, there, there. Price is at its lowest, price at it. But as the price, price comes down, the quantity increase. Quantity increase. And that is now inelastic demand, it stays exactly the same, like we said. Like we said. Okay. Now, how are we doing on time? Factors that, uh, when we start? Uh, we are half an hour. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, factors that, the determinant of price factors that affect uh, electricity. Availability of substitutes. Mm. Now, this is also, I've seen this in so many question papers, so maybe, maybe, it's paper, in fact, the whole chapter. <laughs> of, now, what e elasticity, how, how is it influenced? By what is it influenced? <coughs> Availability of substitutes. Uh, if, 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 if telcom increase, okay, its price to whatever, is there a substitute available? Can I go somewhere else? Okay. In terms of water and electricity, no. <laughs> water and electricity, you cannot, you cannot. If they, if they increase the price, you have no other recourse. You will just have to live with it. You just have to live with it. In fact, if fuel, fuel, everybody, all the, all the different outlets, they will increase the price equally. But if there is, if cell C increase its price, do you have alternatives? Yes, you do. You can look at Vodacom, you can look at MTN, uh, so that will obviously influence a supplier's price because the supplier will know if I increase this too drastically, people will just go elsewhere. But whereas water and lights, municipalities, they can do what they want because you cannot go anywhere else. Okay, the price out of the purging power example, salt is not very expensive. So if you if you lift the price salt by twenty percent, you're not going to it's not going to make a dent in anybody's uh, budget at all. So it can be done. Twenty percent there can be done. 
but a 20% in electricity is uh, it's, it's a big blow. It's not the same thing. That's why we say price relative to purchase of power. Product durability, repairing durability products instead of replacing them, etc. Cars. Uh, if 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 a product, uh, will I repair this? Will I repair my my five year old car or will I replace it? It it also affects. It also affects that. And then there is something. Uh, other uses, like for example, like medicine that you cannot see there. My my apologies for that, ladies and gentlemen. And then the cost. And, and once again get variable cost over there, the determinant, remember, don't forget the topic there, the cost determinant of price, how do we determine price? You've got your variable cost, cost that, would, that change with changes, you've got your fixed cost, you've got your average variable cost, now this, average variable cost, you do more of this in operations management, operations management, uh, average variable cost, etc., how do you calculate that one, average total cost, etc., uh, the marginal costs. Let me go to the others. Further, still, the cost determinant of price. Uh, now, this is also a one markup pricing. Costs can be used to use prices in a various variety of ways. Go to markup pricing, where you say, I buy the apple for one rand. I'm just going to add profit, two rand for profit. Okay, right? That's markup pricing. Profit maximization occurs when your margin equals your marginal cost, your break-even pricing is. Now it's important for any outlet to be to know how many units will he have to sell in order to break even for that month. Breaking even, taking all his other uh, uh, costs into account. There's your break-even analysis. It is, and, and the formula there is, but more this, especially in operations management. You will do this in operations management. In a, in, a, in a much more detailed way, the total fixed cost divided by the fixed costs, and there you get your, your limitations, you go through that. <coughs> Other determinants of price, introductory price scheming, uh, growth, uh, you will recall this, what is this all about? Yes, 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 I can see so, the student shows here that curve, it's a product life cycle. Mm -hmm. The product life cycle, you have your introduction, you have your growth strategy, you have your mature strategy, uh, not strategy, stage, stage rather. Stage. Introductory stage, growth stage, mature stage, and decline stage. Now, different price strategies will have to be applied at different levels of the product life cycle. If there you can get price scheming, for example, stabilization of prices, and you'll have to look at the competition, your distribution strategy, your marketing and communications. Um, how to set the price. The first step, now, uh, I always tell my students, listen here, if there's a few things that you can take out of your course, if you, if you one day out there in the world of work, uh, you might be confronted with something like this. In every single chapter, you'll find a manual like this, telling you what to do in a particular situation. Now, this one, you can maybe just mark down how to set the price on a product. When you are in your own entrepreneurial space, in your own business, then you take out this. It is a formula that it, it, it works, it was tested, it was researched, it is done. You can use this. You can use this as a manual, as a guidance in your business. You formulate your pricing objectives. We're going to do that a little bit more just now. You estimate your demand, your cost and your profits. You choose a price strategy and you fine-tune the base with, with pricing tactics. Uh, that is the first one, establish pricing objectives, like we've said, remember, we, we've done this, profit orientated, is it going to be a profit orientating object, uh, uh, objective, is a sales orientated one, or a status quo one, you decide that in your business, and it depends on a lot of things, you demand, you establish demand cost in your profits, establish total revenue at a variety of prices, like we did with the apples, with different prices, we've got it at 3 rand, we've got it at 2 rand, 50, we've got it at 2 rand, Determine corresponding cost. The corresponding cost in that case remain the same and estimate how, how much profit you can make. Uh, and choose a price strategy. Price scheming. What is meant by price scheming? Listen to the word. Now sometimes I always tell all my students before you try to answer something, just listen, just look at the word. Try to figure out without thinking about anything. Now price scheming, if I were to corner you in Canal Walk or Tigerville and ask you, what is the meaning of price scheming? Then you might, okay, you know the meaning of price scheming. 
uh, what will you say, even before you, and you'll be amazed with the answers you will get to with just by thinking, scheming, scheming. You take, it's a high price in relationship to com, 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 competing price. In other words, you scheme off the top. You scheme off the top. It's very high in relation to industry ones. Penetration pricing, low price to reach the mass market as soon as possible. Now that one there, I can tell you stories about penetration pricing and how people now, big companies, how they use this to their advantage. You get big companies, for example, they will buy Coca-Cola, and I'm not going to mention the big supermarket's names. They will buy a two-liter Coca-Cola from Coke for eight rand a bottle. Eight rand a bottle, right? Because they're big and they're massive and they're large, they can literally buy thousands because they have to supply all the outlets in the country. So what they do, they firstly they negotiate with Coca-Cola to buy it at seven rand. Maybe they get away with it, maybe they don't. But if they don't, they've got other very strong products within their supermarket, sugar, meat, etc. They can literally sell that Coke for six rand. Bought it for eight rand, sell it for six rand, just to the, the competition and just to get people to their shops. They do that all the time. They do that all the time. So it is a low price to reach a mass market as soon as possible. With a new product, they can do that. You, you've seen, I think Woolworths is, Woolworths is brilliant in doing this. They, they knew because they were a menu and menu changes all the time. The food products are different products and different combinations. of the, Anything new on Woolworths shelves, you'll find at a very good price. But boy, oh boy, go see after three months. <laughs> after three, they look at the popularity of that particular item and they, they lift it by, even by 100%. Because they, so that is penetration pricing. Status quo pricing, uh, you charge a price very close to that of the competition. You don't even worry. You can just maybe Google that and you no thinking when it comes to status quo pricing. Uh, the legality and ethics price strategies. Price fixing, you've heard about price fixing. And there was a very huge one in 27 where Tiger Brands had, they were fined the tune of 99 million rand for price fixing. So that is, this is, this is, not, this is not legal, it is Ill illegal under the Competition Act in South Africa. So it comes where people from the same industry get together and they say, for in, in exactly that example, I think it was bread. That was it, bread. Yeah. That was bread. They say, let us all charge not less than that price and who's suffering the most your poor people the poor people so price fixing in south africa is predatory is, a, a predatory is charging a very low price for a product with the intention of driving competitive that was the coke one i've, I've mentioned to you uh, uh, this company will see there's a there's a small grocery stop a, shop, a shop opening up 100 meter from them and they will do that kind of thing lower their price in that particular branch lower their price of coca-cola to six rand drive them out close their doors and then take it back to its normal price again. They do that all the time. They do that all the time. Not a very ethical thing to do. That's why we said, listen, this is uh, the legality and ethics of price strategy. That one is not a very ethical thing, but no, it is, it is maybe not illegal. Maybe not illegal, but not very, That one is illegal. That one is illegal. Uh, uh, still, how to set the price? You fine-tune the base. With pricing tactics, you get discounts, allowances, and rebates. Now, they are nice examples. They are nice examples in your textbook. Trade loading, geographic pricing, special pricing tactics. Also, very nice, very nice essay type questions for the examination. So, watch it. Uh, fine tune the base with pricing tactics. You get uh, discounts. That's the one that we've mentioned. That was just the heading. This is the actual explanation of that particular heading. If I go back, uh, you will see that. Now that was the heading, and this is in more detail. You get quantity discounts, cumulative quantity, cash discount. Now I'm not going to spend much time on this because it is self-explanatory. What you, if you see it, you understand it. You get seasonal discounts, you get promotional allowances, trade loading uh, occurs when the manufacturer temporarily lowers the price to induce all sales and retailers to buy more products than can be sold in a reasonable time. Uh, Geographic pricing, you get your free on board, FOB, where they say <coughs> you absorb all the freight costs, when they say all the price in that particular region will be the same because uh, uh, it is done with the, 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 the supplier will carry the, the freight cost as well. You get uniform delivered pricing, you get zone pricing, you get, but as I say, there are nice examples in your textbooks. 
uh, freight absorption pricing where the seller pays everything, basing point pricing, seller designates a base point, for example, uh, they'll say uh, uh, from Cape Town CBD, from Cape Town CBD in a radius of 10 kilometers, the price will be 50 rand, but more than that, it increase. Okay, that's a base, base point pricing. As they designate a base point. There are more, there are more single price fixing. You've, 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 you've seen the five rent stores. You've seen it in, in, in shopping malls where everything is priced the same. It's five rand. You see flexible pricing, industrial products. You'll see price lining it's at different intervals. You get clothes at 30 rand, not 31 rand, not 35 rand. And you get another interval close at 60 rand, etc. And nothing in between. Nothing in between. A leader pricing, near or even below cost, so hopes customers buy more. This is that leader pricing is when you buy something for seven rand, like an example I've mentioned to you, but your markup is so, you, you sell it for seven and five cent. You're not going to make a profit on there, but your other products. So that, then you want to be the leader pricer. Bait pricing, false or misleading advertisers, uh, but says it's sold out. Now that one, that one, that one is a very tricky one. And it happens all the time. It happens all the time. People will, will advertise that LG is a very good product. They will advertise an LG uh, fridge worth 8,000 Rand. They will advertise it for 3,000 Rand. And when you get to the shop, they tell you, sorry, it's sold out. It happens. But now you're in the store, and while you're there, you will look at, look at maybe a Samsung. And you'll look at the other things that they have. That is... That is very unethical, but it happens. Mm. It happens. Your bait, your bait pricing, or even price. Now this, <laughs> this one is very. I, I, I'm also a victim of this. Ninety-nine and ninety-nine cents. Why is it that we, when we think of the price of that particular item, we still think ninety rand? It's a hundred rand. It's a hundred rand, but you know you're being tricked. It's psychological. You know you're being tricked. Something is uh, 5,995. It is 6,000. Think of it as 6,000 and not 5,900. 5, That's trickery. But we know we're being tricked, but we still, we still, we still go for it. Uh, price bundling. Two or more products into single packages. I see the fruit stores, Woolworths, the fruit and vegetable. They have all sorts of <coughs> things they bundle together and they say uh, they, they, you can get all this for 100 rand. And sometimes you bu buy it then. Sometimes it's not even something that you use. Mm -hmm. So be careful. It must be, if it's a good buy, it must be things that you really want to buy and used to buy. Uh, Two-part pricing with two separate charges for one thing. Uh, yeah, gym, gym membership. Gym membership might be one of them, sports clubs, or even even printers. Um, you Can you think of something that you, you must buy separately, but the one cannot go without the other one? Can you think of that? Think of this, it's simple. Let's, 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 let's keep it here. This, this infrared pointer, this thing cannot operate without batteries. It, it, it cannot, and, if, and sometimes they will sell the batteries with it, and sometimes they don't. Any so if you buy this, also. pardon? Any remote control. It cannot work, operate, so you have to buy that as well. It is useless. <coughs> if you think of anything else that, that you cannot, you, you need to buy them separately, and they cannot operate. What else is there? Like a doll, a talky doll. You need the batteries. That's another another set where you need batteries. You, you cannot operate this without with, without 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 batteries. Okay. So uh, and and they and they sometimes now this two part pricing is not the same as the printer section. Oh my! <coughs> I'm not getting power here. I'm running out of power. And I uh, okay. Maybe it is a good cue for me to. To end this, uh, you get product line pricing. Uh, we're setting prices for entire line of product markets. You get relationship pricing. Comp that you see that complementary, not complementary. Complementary is increase in sale of one lease, increase in demand of the other one. The sales of cigarettes lead to the sale of matches and, and that kind of thing. You get substitute products. Uh, you cannot... If you buy one, it's highly unlikely that you buy a second one. Candle, you either buy the tablets or the powder, but you, you won't buy both. You won't buy both. You won't buy both. Uh, 
during difficult times of inflation, you get your cost orientated tactics, you get your demand orientated tactics, and you get your tactics to make demand more inelastic. Uh, let me quickly see times of recession still. This is our last slide. Uh, you can apply these different tactics, value pricing, pricing bundling or unbundling tactics you use. Now, oh, before we go into end this lecture, you will see that the pricing tactics, the different pricing strategies towards the end, towards the end, I haven't really explained that. There's a reason for that. I want you to read about it because it's very, very simple to understand. Let's quickly go back there. It is very simple to understand. If you just read through it, you will all that. You're all that. What is a single price tactic? I mean, what explanation could there possibly be for that? Flexible pricing. Read through it and understand it. And uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your attendance. All the best, students. Bye-bye.